Hi, I'm Mike Lohini, Client Technology Specialist from Dell, and this is my review of the Dell Precision 7865 Workstation powered with the AMD Threadripper Pro 5000 series. Uh, this machine is a beast, right? Underneath the hood, I can put the Threadripper Pro with up to 64 cores and 128 threads. I support up to one terabyte of DDR4 memory. I can fit two double wide graphic cards so I can support up to two AMD Radeon Pro 6800s, um, or I can put in two NVIDIA RTX A6000, which would bring me up to a whopping 56 gigabytes of uh, video memory. Uh, the storage in this is rateable, and I can support up to 56 terabytes of storage in the machine. Uh, wrap that up with the 1350 watt power supply. I got plenty of power for everything I want to do. But before we get in, uh, I do want to note uh, that I do work for Dell. Uh, this is my uh, own YouTube channel. Uh, so if I do say something wrong, uh, I own it. That's on me. Wanted to get that out of the way. And also I want to give a shout out to Michael Carlson on the uh, Dell AMD team for uh, getting, letting me borrow this machine to do my review. So what is a Threadripper Pro? Before we get into that, let's go through some of the basics of a processor, right? What is a core? Well, core is a CPU processor. So if I have 64 cores um, on my, my process, I mean, it has 60, uh, 64 CPUs on it. Oh, then you hear me say 64 cores with 128 threads. Well, what's a thread versus a uh, core? Well, a thread is a virtualized core uh, in the CPU, allowing that CPU to handle multiple instructions. So if you want to think of it, give an analogy, uh, if you think of a CPU as a, as a person, you know, here I am. If I had no uh, threads in it, I'd be a person with, with one hand and I would be able to move an object, do uh, what my brain tells me to do with my hand or execute instructions. If I was uh, threaded and had uh, two cores, that would be like me having uh, two hands. So I'm able to do two different uh, instructions at the same time uh, with my two hands, but a, a single uh, brain, so a single CPU on that. Uh, then you hear the term uh, clock speed uh, or frequency. Um, what that means is the measurement of the number of cycles a CPU can execute per second. So for example, if I have a processor to 3.2 gigahertz, that means it executes 3.2 billion cycles per second. So how fast my hands uh, are moving. Uh, so looking at the Threadripper Pro, we do use the Pro 5000 WX series uh, in the Precision 7865. Uh, the most famous one that gets all the attention is the uh, 5995WX, right? And rightfully so, right? 64 cores, 128 threads, uh, a burst speed up to 4.5 gigahertz uh, on there. But it also gets overshadowed um, by the, uh, the Pro 5945, um, and that has 12 cores and 24 threads. And you may go, oh, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of disappointing. You only, only 12 cores, only 12 cores. Um, but where uh, people will find this one uh, fascinating, if I'm doing a lot of modeling, um, so if I've already rendered, an, uh, a, say, an image, and I'm moving that uh, image around and modeling it, uh, it's more important for the uh, frequency rate. And the base frequency rate on that 5945 is a 4.1 gigahertz. So it's base speed that it's always running is super, super fast. So if I'm into modeling, wow, that is a very, very attractive uh, processor uh, to me. So um, I always like to point that out because it, it really does get overshadowed sometimes by the, the core count of the 5995. So now let's take a look at the machine. We'll start on the front of the, of the system or the outside and I'll work our way in. Let's start out with the measurements of uh, the 7865. So if we um, want to look at it from a height perspective, from uh, you know top to bottom here, including the little rubber feet uh, on the bottom, that measures out at 16.46 uh, inches. Um, from a width, from this side to this side, including rubber feet, so I got four little rubber feet on the side here, uh, that including that depth, that is 6.94 uh, inches. And you may say, well, wait, why do I have rubber feet on the bottom of the machine and on the side? And uh, the reason um, you would do that is if you'd want to lay this machine uh, down flat. And typically where I've seen that is um, if you're going to put uh, this workstation in the data center and you're putting it into a rack, rather than having stand up, you can get a little shelf and 
uh, slide it in so you don't take up as much room. So you can have it this uh, vertically or horizontally um, laid down on that, that machine. So it includes that rubber feet. Um, if we look at the depth from front to back, including there's a little um, cable loop lock in, in the back of it, barely protrudes out, but including that measurement is 17.79 uh, inches. Uh, from a weight perspective, it varies, um, right? Because, you know, I talked about being able to put 54 terabytes of data and dual, uh, you know, graphic cards in the machine. So depending on that configuration, you know, it's going to range anywhere from 35.5 pounds up to 48.28 pounds uh, in weight. And you say, hey, that's that's kind of beefy. Well, that, that gets into uh, another one of the nice features of it. Um, on the top here, is a actual uh, handle that you can put your hand in and grip it. And there's a little lip on the back as well that you can grip, making it easier to lift rather than kind of having that awkward of trying to put my hands in, in the side and pulling it and, you know, it's slipping. So a really nice handle for, um, especially when you're deploying uh, this asset. Uh, so we, we've got that. If we start looking at the ports that we have uh, or the front face, uh, one of the first things you're going to know notice are what we call flex bays. Um, and these bays are, are flexible. Um, you can have them configured or um, you can do it after the fact. But uh, what I've got set in here are two uh, hard drives that I put in. And what's really nice, I press this button and pull out on it. And you can see here's the uh, driveway. And I've got a second one uh, underneath it. And I'll slide it back in there and uh, lock it back into place. First question, maybe why? <laughs> you know, why would I want a removable hard drive like that? Um, you know, a lot of times, uh, especially working with federal government, you have uh, classified information. Uh, a lot of times at the end of the day, you want to pull those drives out and lock them in a safe for safety uh, keep. Um, so a lot of times it's a, a security issue. Another um, is, you know, we talk about, you know, huge models, lots of data sets that we're working with. Uh, creates very big uh, uh, files, right? And these things are too big to send over a network or just take forever to get it over a network. Uh, you can now just pull those drives out and put them into a, another, another machine. Uh, we also do have an option, so it can also be solid state uh, drives that can pop out in the front. And these also can be lockable. So you have a little uh, round key lock uh, for the front face of that to uh, lock them down for uh, a, additional security. Uh, if we go down uh, further, we've got our power on button. Uh, below that, we've got a hard drive indication light. Uh, then we've got a, a um, uh, audio port. Uh, this is for your you know, headsets if you want to plug into uh, that three and a half millimeter uh, port on there. And then we've got two uh, USB 3.2 Gen 1 uh, 5 gigabit uh, per second type A ports. And then below that, we've got two USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabit USB-C port. And one of them is actually a power share. Um, so you can you know, charge your cell phone off of that. Uh, below that is your SD card reader. It's a 6.0 um, below the, the machine. So that is a look at the front face. Now let's take a look at the backup. So we'll start at the top and work our way down. Um, you can see right here, we've got our uh, power cord connection. And, and I do got to note, um, this power cord actually pulled it out of the box here and show you this thing is thick. <laughs> um, you know, obviously it's a 350 watt power supply on there, but this is a heavy gauge um, power cord uh, that comes in the box. Uh, but we'll go down further. We've got two optional ports here. These are um, your PS2 mouse and keyboard ports. Um, for the life of me, I don't know why uh, you would need a PS2, but I'm sure if, if, if you know, put it in the comments. I believe it's because you can authenticate stuff before the BIOS um, in it, but um, uh, you do have that option of putting your uh, old style uh, mouse and keyboard on there. Uh, this port here, which I don't have in right now, it's a punch out. You can have it configured with a serial port uh, as well. We drop down, there is an audio uh, line out uh, RJ45 with uh, gigabit um, uh, Ethernet on there. And hey, yay, <laughs> you got a second, right? RJ45 with a 10 gigabit um, uh, NIC in that uh, machine. So you got dual, dual NICs um, out of the box standard. Uh, if we go down to the ports here on the inside, uh, these are three USB 3 2. Dot, I'm sorry, 3.2. Uh, Gen 1, 5 gigabits per second type A ports. And again, yes, 
you've got USB-C um, uh, 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabits on there. The reason why I say yes is we're getting more and more peripherals that are USB-C and not type A. Um, and I had this on my last desktop. I only had the ports in the front, which made it kind of uh, ugly with the, the cable sig out. So we've got three of them in the back. So I'm really uh, thrilled about that. Uh, we've got five expansion slots. I will talk about that um, here when I go inside the machine. Um, you may notice that I've got um, you know, kind of two funny connectors here on the bottom uh, of this one. This is actually a wireless card and those connections are to a puck. So if we put this puck out here and uh, you kind of screw that in. And the reason is you can, um, you know, especially if you've got this in a, uh, in a, in a tighter area, you can run this, uh, antenna puck up high. So you get better, uh, signal strength on it. But, uh, this one, I've got it configured with, um, that wireless card in it. Uh, that is a look at the back of the machine. Let's dig underneath the hood here. Um, before we get in, let's take a look and you're going to see there's a little key, uh, lock here. And that way you can lock, um, uh, the door to the inside down and then below that you've got a uh, switch and this is what gets you into the into the system you see it's pulled up on that it released the levers and that was how easy it was to get in the machine now taking the first look at this um, what you're going to notice is that we've got this machine segmented out um, you know you think about you know dual um, graphic cards and you know, terabyte of memory and 54 terabytes of storage and a, uh, you know, Threadripper uh, Pro 64 um, cores in this thing, you know, that's a lot of heat, right? And, um, you know, the nice thing about towers is you have the ability to exhaust a lot of air through it to get uh, that heat out. And one of the things we've done brilliantly here is segmented the different air flows uh, for the different pieces of it. So if you look down here at the bottom, um, this is where the uh, graphic cards go. Uh, it goes from front to back. We've got a flow of, of air out the back there. Uh, at the top, we've got another fan here and fan in the back. Um, this is for the power supply and the flex base. So another channel that's straight front to back. In the middle, you're going to see, you know, kind of this black casing here. Uh, underneath this is where the uh, memory and um, the uh, Threadripper Pro is at. Now, if I pull that out, and this is a really wonderful design, what you're going to see is different uh, air chambers or flow chambers in it, and even an additional fan inside this as well. So, uh, cooling that um, Threadripper on top of cooling the memory on it. And you can see this heat sink on this thing. This is a gigantic heat sink. It's one of the biggest I've ever seen. Uh, it's about four inches, I think roughly four inches uh, in height. So uh, very, very big, but it's important to have that airflow and have that airflow not reheating itself over uh, components. So everything's kind of getting that, that fresh air to cool down. Uh, so that's the, you know, the, the first look at it. Uh, up here is that power supply. Again, 300 and... Uh, uh, I mean, 1,350 watt power supply. You know, this is one of the, the mistakes I see a lot of people uh, do. Uh, a lot of times they'll buy just a regular desktop and they go, well, hey, I've got the expansion slots um, in this thing. So, you know, why can't I just, um, you know, buy a graphics card and throw it in there and you find out I don't have enough power supply to uh, power that graphics card. So uh, 350 watts is, is a lot. Um, other things that you're going to notice, right? Here are the flex bays that I showed you in the front. Here are uh, two more uh, internal two and a half, uh, two and a half or three and a half inch SATA drives uh, in the machine. And if we go down here, uh, let's see if we find it. Kind of hard to get within there. Uh, back in here, you've got two internal M.2 MVE slots uh, that are available uh, for you as well. Um, so really, really nice configuration. And I talked about the uh, uh, expansion cards uh, in the machine. You've got them uh, right there. And again, you can put two uh, double uh, height uh, cards uh, in the system. Uh, also, one of the, the really neat things that uh, we have at Dell that you can uh, put in that PCI slot, uh, one of the PCI slots is something called Dell Precision um, uh, ultra speed drives. Um, and these are solid state drives. You can get either two or four terabyte uh, in size, but it connects directly to the uh, system board. Um, and you say, well, well, why do, you know, why do I need that? Um, well, if you think about, <laughs> and I've, I've had a few you know, data scientists run into this, 
you have huge amounts of memory in the machine and, and they're you know, compiling uh, large amounts of data and they cannot feed the memory fast enough from the hard drive. Um, so getting these, uh, also getting these, uh, ultra speed, uh, drives connected to the PCI bus, uh, is faster. Uh, on top of it, this drive, um, it even has its own fan in it. So it cools itself. Uh, and the meantime, the failure rate is, is really long. I and mean, we're talking about 80,000 uh, hours meantime to failure rate. It's about nine years, um, on those. Uh, SSDs in that uh, ultra speed drive. So um, uh, very good. A couple other things that you can put in there. You can also put uh, the Intel Ethernet uh, network adapter, the uh, X710 um, uh, NIC card. Uh, you could put a Thunderbolt 3 PCIe card in there. Uh, I showed you the wireless card. Uh, you can even put a, a USB uh, 4 type C card. Uh, so if you want additional um, type C ports, uh, can. So that is a look at the inside of the machine. Um, so, you know, who would, could use a Threadripper uh, Pro? There are many applications out there, uh, what we call ISV or um, you know, applications that, are, that have been certified on the, 75, uh, uh, the 7865 and certified with the uh, Threadripper Pro. Like if I'm looking at the media and entertainment, you know, maybe if I'm using Adobe After Effects or Adobe Premiere, uh, Premiere Pro, uh, Autodesk, um, you know, Blender is another one. I've got the list up here for you folks. Uh, if I'm design and manufacturing, uh, you know, something like um, MetLab, I know that's really popular, uh, especially in manufacturing, a lot of universities uh, use that. Uh, that's been designed for the Threadripper Pro. Uh, science uh, and software. So if I'm doing things like Unreal Engine or Chaos, you know, again, uh, certified there. The architecture and engineering construction category, uh, we're talking about Autodesk Rivet, uh, Epic Games. Uh, also, you know, those are two great, but here's the whole list that you can, you can see. Uh, so those are uh, a few of the applications and the type of users that will be looking for it. Enjoy so now. this uh, video on the Dell Precision 7865 workstation with AMD Threadripper Pro 5000 series CPU. Again, my name is Mike Lohanian, uh, client technology specialist from Dell. Uh, if you have any questions, just put your uh, questions in the comments. I'll try to get to them as fast as I can.